Guys, guys, great news. Facebook just changed its name to Meta and I have to admit something. I feel so relieved now that I know that finally this step marks a complete reversal for the company. Our privacy will be respected and the world will become a better place. <laughs> Okay, fine, that was a joke, obviously. So, why Meta? Meta stands for metastasis. Basically, it means that Facebook will exponentially multiply all the things that it brought to the world. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I just cannot get myself to start this video seriously. It impresses me how Zuck actually believes that his metaverse idea is a good one. If you don't know what it is, it's a virtual world where you will be able to create an avatar and meet your friends with their avatars in your virtual home or collaborate with your coworkers in a virtual office. Of course, the best experience of this would be in an Oculus virtual reality headset. Hence the change of name to Meta to show the new kind of company that Facebook wants to become. Before we talk more in detail about all of that, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you're new to the channel and smash the like button while you're at it. So, if this metaverse thing sounds familiar, it's because such concepts exist in many different forms already. Logging into Fortnite with your friends to watch a virtual Ariana Grande concert is basically the same thing, or playing Roblox. Heck, Second Life launched in 2003 is the exact same idea but based on older tech. So there's not much new here, except the fact that the metaverse will push facial and gesture recognition further in order for the people to be able to catch those non-verbal clues from avatars almost like in real life. Uh, the problem with all of that is that generally, uh, let's just say it as it is, it's creepy. <laughs> And if you agree or disagree with me, let me know in the comments what you think. Personally, it freaks me out, especially so coming from Facebook, which is a net negative for society. Sure, there are some good things that Facebook built, but mostly it had a bad impact. As the recent leaks confirmed it, Facebook prioritized profit over safety and well-being of its users by letting fake news and hate spread on its platforms. And while there is hate between right-wing and left-wing people both accusing Facebook of exactly the same thing, but from an opposite perspective, uh, the reality becomes more and more obvious. Facebook simply increases hate between various groups of people. As per its own research, content that is hateful, polarizing, it's easier to inspire people to anger than it is to other emotions. So, it radicalizes point of views and makes us less tolerant of others. It closes us off in our information bubbles where we are only reading and watching stuff that fits our worldview. And if we ever stumble upon something that even slightly goes against it, boom, blocked, unfriended, cancelled. So no, Facebook isn't taking any side. Facebook is taking all sides and maximizing emotions between these sites in order to, well, keep people interacting on its platforms and generate money from advertising. As said here, Facebook realized that if they change the algorithm to be safer, people will spend less time on the site, they'll click on less ads, they'll make less money. But that's not all. Instagram, on the other hand, which is often portrayed as the only fun and cool side of Facebook, also is probably a net negative for society. There are so many reports of people, especially teenagers, falling into depression or losing confidence while comparing themselves to the fake lives lived by their peers. Not to mention how it ruined tourism by exposing the best secret spots of the world to everybody and how it generated repulsive behavior where instead of enjoying the moment, we pull out our phones to record it because we prefer to show off our lives instead. You're never going to watch that fireworks or concert video, but you're still recording it, right? And don't get me wrong, most of us are addicted to this behavior, myself included. No matter how much I try to fight it and criticize it like in this video, for example. So Facebook gathering all its resources to bring all this into a virtual world where we would spend more time in locked into headsets, well, excuse me, but I'll pass. And I think more and more people will. While there's still some excitement about this project, the tide is starting to turn with people becoming more and more aware of problems created by social media in general and Facebook in particular. 
A good monitor of this can be the like and dislike count on big videos about the topic. Quite regularly, the dislike count is relatively high, but the funniest part of this is the official meta presentation video on its YouTube channel. Guess what? Like and dislike count is hidden, and comments are turned off. <laughs> Actually, it's the case for every single video on this channel. Why is that so, right? I am dumbfounded Mark thinks that the metaverse is appealing, while it's actually creepy AF. If this is the best that they could come up with in such a powerful company, then maybe it's a sign that things are getting out of hand. There are so many actions that they could have done in order to prioritize the well-being of their users to improve their image, but no, creepy digital dystopia it is. This series of bad decisions is starting to show in Facebook's difficulty to attract top talent, as more and more people prefer to avoid working there no matter the high salary. But of course, Facebook numbers will still be great for a while, given that there's not many options for companies to reach their potential customers, as long as we prioritize spending time on Facebook, um, sorry, meta platforms over other places. The reality is that most likely Zuck's time at the company should be coming to an end, and what Facebook really needs is a change of management that will change the culture in the first place. Facebook investors are in a funny position where they're happy that Facebook prioritizes revenue for them, but also start to panic about where this strategy could eventually lead the company. But even if they wanted to replace Mark, they couldn't, because he is the king, and he still holds the majority of the voting power, so he can't be ousted. And that's the biggest problem. He is a genius in many ways, but there's also no one to correct his course when he stubbornly decides to do something that is actually damaging for the company. He could be very well digging Facebook's own grave and nobody would be able to stop him. Basically, the world is more than ready for an alternative social network, but meta app scale, such as WhatsApp, makes it difficult to switch, even when people want to do so. Where are you going to find all your contacts then? In Messenger? On Instagram? Yeah, the Zaki really did a great job acquiring potential competitors before they became serious threats. And it showed when Facebook experienced its massive hours-long blackout. Most internet users really didn't know where to go. Everybody flocked to Twitter for instant news and interactions. Uh, Reddit also experienced spikes. And messaging services like Telegram, Signal and Viber gained new users, none of which even appear in this list for the United States. But what did we all do when Facebook went back online? We also went back, once again, because of scale and habit. Let me know what you think of Meta in the comments and hate on the like button if you agree with this video. See you in the Metaverse!